So now that we have a good understanding of the Nash bargaining uh, solution and we know what bargaining problems are, we've characterized axiomatically the Nash bargaining solution. Let's finally get on paper and do some analysis of the Nash bargaining solution. So we're going to uh, examine a special case of the bargaining problem, the dividing a dollar game, in order to show a special, uh, a special case of a general result relating to risk aversion and bargaining. So how does being more or less risk averse affect your bargaining outcome? So let's remember the dividing a dollar game. So we introduced this in the first part of the lecture. It would be the set of pairs of utility numbers, u1 of x, u2 for y. So a utility for player one and a utility for player two. And the conditions were that, well, these amounts x and y were amounts of money. They were both non-negative and that they summed up x plus y to uh, a fixed amount. So we said less than or equal to one. So we're just dividing one dollar or one unit of any currency. OK, so this was the bargaining game and the disagreement point was zero, zero. So effectively, we're setting the utility of both players receiving zero dollars equal to zero. OK, so that's fixed. So how do we apply the Nash bargaining solution to this problem? Well, we need to find the pair. We're going to maximize by choosing an X and a Y the Nash product. So the utility of for player one of the amount X, the utility of player two, the amount Y, multiply them together, subject to uh, this pair of numbers. So the utility numbers we're dealing with belong to our set S. Or we could just write subject to the condition x plus y is less than or equal to 1 and x and y are non-negative. OK, so uh, as a first step to simplifying our approach to solving this problem, remember that the Nash bargaining solution satisfies the property of efficiency. So it's going to choose a Pareto efficient alternative. So at the solution, we're not going to be throwing any money away. So x star, the best x, plus y star, the best y, or the y chosen by the Nash bargaining solution, are going to be equal to 1. OK, so let's just consider um, that y is equal to 1 minus x, OK, so that no money is being thrown away. And you can see how this simplifies the problem. Now, rather than two dimensions, we're just choosing an x to maximize the Nash product, the utility for player one of X, multiplied by the utility for player two of one minus X. Okay, so that's reduced one of the dimensions. And the constraint is now simply that X is, um, well, I guess it belongs to the interval zero to one. Okay, that would be our constraint now. So, Let's talk about risk aversion. How do we capture the idea of one player being more risk averse than another? Well, remember, risk aversion in expected utility theory means your von neumann morgenstern utility function, u1 and u2, are strictly concave. Now, to be more risk averse means your utility function is more concave. How do we capture that mathematically? Well, we'd say that the function u2 is some transformation of, so it's F composed with the utility for player one, where this F is an increasing function. So it's, uh, I'll just write it's increasing or strictly increasing and strictly concave. So it has a negative second, to second derivative. Okay, so we're assuming that F is smooth in this case. Um, so this would capture the idea that player two is more risk averse than player one. He's taken player one's utility function and he's made it more concave. And so he's more risk averse. So now we have 
we can rewrite our problem, replacing u2 by this uh, composition, f composed with u1. So let's rewrite the problem. So to find the Nash solution for this problem, we're going to maximize by choosing an amount x, the Nash product, the utility for player one of the amount x, multiplied by the utility for player two, which is f of u of one minus x. Okay, so if we find the x that maximizes this Nash product, then we found the alternative, the uh, Nash bargaining solution for this problem. Okay, now we won't be able to pin it down exactly because these utility functions are very general. So that should be u1 there. Um, but we will be able to say something about the outcome. So let's examine the first order condition, foc. So if I want to maximize an expression like this, I differentiate with respect to x, and then I find the x star that makes that derivative zero. That would be the first order condition. So let's differentiate this with respect to x. There's a product here of two things. This you function u1 of x is being multiplied by something else. And we've got a composition here. So we're going to need the product rule and the chain rule. So let me just write this out. So I differentiate the first part, u1 prime. I'll just write for the derivative. And we're evaluating this at the optimal x. So u1, the derivative or the marginal utility at x star multiplied by this expression. And then I'm using the product rule, so I add, actually there's a minus, so I'll just leave the minus out. Um, U1 of x star multiplied by f prime, u1 1 minus x star, and multiplied by the marginal utility at 1 minus x star. Okay, so you can go over that and recap the uh, what uh, rules of calculus I'm using here. And this entire expression evaluated at x star, the alternative player one or the amount player one receives under the Nash bargaining solution, this has to equal zero. Okay, so this long expression has to equal zero. So let's see if we can rearrange this expression and clean it up a little. Um, so I'm going to get player one's utility of x star on this side. So I get the marginal utility of x star divided by the utility of x star must equal a similar expression for player two. So the marginal utility using this comp composed function multiplied by this. Okay, so this is a condition that must hold when x star is the amount the Nash bargaining solution is assigning to player one. So let's have a look at this particular ratio here. Okay, and remember that f is a strictly increasing function. So for example, one property of um, increasing and concave functions is that f, the if I take a derivative f of z, it's always going to be less than f of z divided by z, okay? So have a look at this slide now and you can see the intuition for this. Essentially, it captures the idea that for concave functions where the average is decreasing, marginal is always less than average. Okay, so the uh, slope of this tangent of f evaluated at z, the derivative of f evaluated at point z, will always be less than this, the slope of this line that connects f at z back to the origin. Okay, so marginal is less than average is how you could remember this. You could prove this formally, but graphically this gives you the idea. So let's put this inequality to use. Because our function f is strictly increasing, 
and uh, is zero at zero, we know that um, f is strictly positive for all z greater than zero. And so we can rearrange this inequality to be f prime of z over f of z is less than or equal to 1 over z for all strictly positive z. Now let's look at the first order condition that we derived. So this equation uh, must be satisfied by the alternative x star, which is the amount that player 1 receives, uh, the amount of money that player 1 receives, under the Nash bargaining solution. Coloured in green here, you can see a ratio of um, a derivative of f divided by f, where we're evaluating both of these at the point, the utility of player 1 for the amount 1 minus x star. So if we let z equal player 1's utility of 1 minus x star in the above inequality, then we can get the following inequality, that the ratio of um, marginal utility of x star for player 1 uh, over the utility of x star for player 1 is less than or equal to player 1's marginal utility for 1 minus x star divided by player 1's utility for 1 minus x star. Now remember that player 1's utility is a strictly increasing and concave function. And so the marginal utility, the first derivative of the utility function, is a decreasing function. It's positive, but it's decreasing. His utility is increasing. And so this ratio of marginal utility decreasing divided by an increasing function means that this ratio is decreasing as x gets larger. And so for this inequality to be true, we must have that x star is greater than 1 minus x star. Equivalently, this means x star is greater than 1 half, greater than or equal to 1 half, and 1 minus x star is less than or equal to 1 half. So what have we shown here? Well, we've shown that in the divide a dollar game, where players are bargaining over how to share one dollar between them, the player who is less risk averse, player one in our example, is going to get at least half the dollar, possibly more, and the player who is more risk averse is going to do worse. So you can remember this result as the fact that risk aversion in general is detrimental in bargaining. Other things being equal, you would always want to face a more risk-averse opponent. So that concludes our analysis of bargaining theory for this course. If you're interested in finding out more about bargaining theory beyond the syllabus of this course, I think the natural next step would be to find out about Ariel Rubinstein's alternating offers model of bargaining. This is a uh, non-cooperative approach. Uh, to studying the bargaining problem. Today we looked at what is generally called cooperative game theory. In particular, one of the nice things about Rubenstein's paper, as well as getting very clean results, is that it provides a link between non-cooperative non and cooperative game theory, something that's widely known as the Nash programme. So I leave this for you to look into, and if you want any advice, get in touch. In the next lecture, we will be looking at experimental economics. Now, we won't cover a wide survey of experimental economics. Rather, I'll just focus on several things that theorists can uh, get involved in when doing experiments, designing experiments, designing the kind of tools that are used in experiment, experimental economics, in particular for measuring utility functions, eliciting utility functions, and eliciting uh, subjective beliefs, measuring probability measures. So I look forward to seeing you next time. In the meantime, take care.